Hello, hello, I'm Brunton, one of our NCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get accepted into medical school and other professional programs. Today, we're exploring the TCA cycle, known by many names like the citric acid cycle or Krebs cycle. This cycle is the cornerstone or center stone of cellular respiration. It's absolutely crucial for energy production in aerobic organisms like you. Let's delve into the steps of the cycle and understand its regulation and significance in metabolism. This is absolutely huge for the bio biocom sections of the MCAT. Expect to see anywhere from two to five questions relating to the TCA cycle. Let's start with a bird's eye view on where is the TCA cycle taking place? Well, it's gonna happen in the mitochondria inside a eukaryotic cell. Inside of the mitochondria, it's gonna take place inside of the matrix, the squiggly fluid-filled bit in the middle. It begins with acetyl-CoA combining with oxaloacetate to form citrate. Citrate is a six carbon molecule. One, two, three, four, five, six. The cycle will then undergo a series of eight chemical reactions involving redox, hydration, dehydration, and decarboxylation. These reactions will eventually regenerate oxaloacetate to recombine with acetyl-CoA to form citrate again. So it's a cycle, it's regenerative. On, along the way, it's gonna produce important molecules like ATP, GTP, NADH, and FADH2. Remember that one glucose molecule will actually yield two acetyl-CoA molecules. So if you have a single glucose being oxidized, well, it's gonna go through this cycle twice. Now let's break it down with some specifics. So zooming in here, on step one, we have oxaloacetate, which is a four carbon molecule, one, two, three, four. That's gonna combine with acetyl-CoA, a two carbon molecule to make citrate, which we've already established is a six carbon molecule. You wanna count your carbons. It's gonna be very, very helpful to understanding this cycle. So after we formed citrate, we're then just going to isomerize it. We're gonna spin it around through a dehydration and hydration reaction. Nothing important is gonna be made from here, except we've just kind of spun it. Next, we have something important happening. We're making NADH. Whenever we're making NADH or ATP, this is an important step for the MCAT. And we're going to make this by going from citrate to alpha keta butyrate. Notice we've lost a CO2, which means a carbon is gone. Now we have one, two, three, four, five carbons in alpha keta glutarate. From alpha keta glutarate, we are going to again make another NADH as we go to succinyl CoA which will leave us with four carbons. And I want to draw your attention to a naming convention here. Dehydrogenase, isocitrate dehydrogenase, alpha glutarate dehydrogenase. Both of these enzymes are producing NADH. That can be a nice giveaway when you're on the MCAT, when it asks, hey, what does the blah blah dehydrogenase enzyme do? Well, it's probably making FADH2 or NADH. So after we've made succinate, we're going to continue along the cycle, making fumarate, nothing you really need to understand here. Fumarate will then turn to malate and malate to oxaloacetate. Again, I've got malate dehydrogenase, so we were making a NADH. And it's important to know your total products here. So from one turn of the citric acid cycle or the TCA cycle or the Krebs cycle, we're gonna get one ATP. Well, truly it's a GTP, but ATP, GTP, the MCAT's gonna use it interchangeably, so, so will I. And we're also gonna make our three NADH. One, two. Next, we're also going to make a FADH2, just shown over here as Q on the diagram. And we're also spitting off two CO2s of sort of waste that's happening with isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. And this makes sense. We're losing a carbon from each of our molecules. It's got to go somewhere, so we're going to breathe it out. The TCA cycle is tightly regulated to meet the cell's energy demands efficiently. Key enzymes like citrate synthesis, like citrate synthase, isocitrate dehydrogenase, and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase play significant roles. These enzymes are regulated by energy status indicators like ATP, NADH, and ADP. For example, high ATP and high NADH, which would mean you have a lot of energy, is going to inhibit these enzymes slowing down the cycle. Conversely, having low ADP, which would mean, hey, we are low on energy, we should make some more energy. That's going to increase the TCA cycle. So it's an activator. For example, high ATP and NADH inhibit these enzymes slowing the cycle, while high ADP will actually activate it, which makes sense. If we have a lot of ADP, it means we don't have a lot of ATP. So we need to make some more ATP. Additionally, the cycle is also influenced by the availability of substrates like acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate. 
linking it to other meta metabolic pathways like colysis and fatty acid metabolism. Importantly, the TCA cycle is interconnected with overall metabolism. Its products, NADH and FADH2, are crucial for ATP production in oxidative phosphorylation complexes 1 and 2 respectively. The cycle also produces metabolic intermediates used in other pathways, which highlights its role in energy and biosynthetic metabolism. To summarize this really important topic, the TCA cycle is vital in understanding metabolism overall. It is intricately regulated and integral to energy production. Understanding its steps and regulation is absolutely key for your MCAT prep, especially for the biobiochem sections. So definitely make your Anki cards, get this committed to memory, and I want to thank you so much for watching our video, and I will see you next time.